We've all seen the flash cars, giant hotels, and lavish lifestyles enjoyed in Dubai. Oil money has made the country rich in just a few generations. But while Dubai's skyline might have been paid for with oil money, it was built with the blood of foreign slave labour. In the UAE, the home of Dubai, only 20% of the population are Emirati. The rest are foreign labourers, who are so numerous they actually outnumber the natives. And sure, some of them are rich westerners, making a lot of money. But it's not them I'm interested in. It's the workers who come from poorer countries and get taken advantage of, particularly Indians and Pakistanis, who make up 40% of the total population. They're lured abroad by promises of good wages and a lifestyle unattainable at home. But it's a trap. Once they make it abroad, their passports are taken from them by their employers, and they are denied an exit visa, making it impossible to leave the country. They are then told the truth. Long hours, low pay, and no way out. In fact, Dubai, the gem of the Middle East, is almost entirely built on foreign slave labour. But once they're trapped, the workers are bused to villages and camps around the outskirts of the city, crammed into tiny rooms with intermittent electricity and unreliable water, crammed together like animals. The cost for boarding eats up most of the workers' wages. It's common for expats to send money home as a remittance, but the workers tricked into these schemes just don't make enough to do so. According to official statistics, two migrant workers kill themselves each week, but that doesn't reveal the true extent. The Indian consulate reported 971 deaths of Indian nationals in 2005 alone. That's nearly three a day. But when the Indian consulate released this figure, they were told by the authorities to stop counting, and when the authorities talk, everybody listens. As enshrined by Emirati law, part of the contract the workers sign must legally include a large final payment, which is to cover the cost of the flights back to their home country. So the expats have a reason to keep working, even under poor conditions, instead of revolting. The idea of finally getting back home one day and putting an end to the nightmare is enough hope to keep them going. Regardless, the alternative, walking home through the desert in 50 degree or 120 Fahrenheit heat, just isn't feasible. So the workers slave away 12 hours a day, waiting for their last payment. But in a last cruel twist, the pandemic hit. The oil price crashed and the economy shut down. The government told agencies they had to continue to provide food and shelter to blue-collar workers during the pandemic, even if they were laid off in the downturn. So they did. But now many of these companies have went bankrupt, and these workers who were relying on their final payment to get home are truly trapped. Charities come past with food and water when they can, but otherwise the workers are left to go hungry, with no way to get home. In the past few months, some consulates have started to order emergency evacuation flights because of this crisis. But it's a lottery, and if you're born in the wrong place, you're out of luck. So you might be wondering, why are the local Emirati not outraged by these inhumane conditions for migrant workers? Well, let's take a look at it from their perspective. There may be no right to vote in the UAE, but for the average young Emirati, the system works. Their grandparents might have struggled for water and food and lived a life of poverty. Nowadays, a young Emirati can live a lifestyle unimaginable to their forebears. They can expect average salaries of over 60,000 US dollars, all whilst the government pays for education up to PhD level, pays for healthcare at home, and if it's not good enough at home, they can travel abroad for treatment. That'll be paid for too. And it doesn't stop there. When you marry, say hello to a free house. Usually a large luxury apartment. On top of that, the cost of living is so low that almost everyone has a maid, a nanny, and a driver. Living standards are unbelievable. And for the morally unscrupulous, they can point to the fact that these practices of taking passports and altering wages are technically illegal, even if there is little enforcement. So don't expect much protest from the Emirati until it becomes so bad that turning a blind eye becomes too much to bear.